In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this image of a cloth napkin draped over a glass cup. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.68a. Before you start, you should make sure that you have the Cycles Render Engine. To check this, come over here to this drop-down menu and verify that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. I'll expand this panel on the right by dragging the edge. For people who are brand new to Blender, I'll quickly cover a few basics. If you want to select an object, then click your right mouse button on it. For example, this is the camera and I can select it by right-clicking on it. This is a light source and I can select it by right-clicking. To rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. If you press and hold the shift key, and then press and hold the middle mouse button, you can pan the view. You can also zoom by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. This is the default scene with a single cube object. We don't need the cube, so I'm going to delete it. To do that, right click on the cube to select it, then press the X key, and then select delete. By the way, if you ever make a mistake and want to undo your last operation, just press Control Z. Now let's add a sphere. In Blender, when you add an object, it will be added at the location of the 3D cursor. This symbol right here is the 3D cursor. You can move the 3D cursor to a new location by clicking the left mouse button. So to add the sphere, click on the Add menu and select Mesh and then UV Sphere. Let's zoom in to see this better. Remember, to zoom, you can use the scroll wheel. Next, we're going to cut off the top of the sphere so that we can change it into a simple glass cup. So click here and select Edit Mode. Then click here and select Wireframe. To make this easier to work with, I'm going to switch to Orthographic Projection. If you look here, you can see that we're currently in Perspective Projection. To switch to Orthographic, click on the View menu and select View Perspective Orthographic. Now if you look here, you can see that we're in Orthographic Projection. Now let's view this sphere directly from the front. So click on the View menu. Here we have selections for left, right, back, front, bottom, and top. If you're interested in learning the hotkeys for these operations, they are listed here on the right. Now I want to switch to Front View, so I'll click on Front. While in Edit Mode, Everything that is selected is highlighted with an orange color. If you press the A key, it will toggle between deselecting everything and selecting everything. We want to deselect everything. Now we're going to select the top area of the sphere. So press the B key. This will allow us to select vertices by drawing a box around them. So position the cursor about right here and then press and hold the left mouse button and draw a selection box around these vertices. Then release the button. Now press the X key to delete and then select vertices. Now we're going to flatten the bottom of the cup. So press the B key and draw a selection box around these vertices. Then click on the scale button. Now press the Z key to restrict the scaling operation to the Z axis. Then type 0 followed by the Enter key. Now switch from Wireframe to Solid. And also switch from Edit Mode to Object Mode. If you rotate the view, you'll notice that the top edge of the cup doesn't have any thickness, so we're going to add a Solidify modifier. To do that, click on the Object Modifiers button that looks like a wrench, then click on Add Modifier and select Solidify. Then set the thickness value to 0.07. You can see that the top edge now has a thickness. Now we're going to smooth out the surface of the cup. So we'll first shrink down the size of the flat faces that make up the surface and then apply smoothing. So to shrink the flat faces, we'll add a subdivision surface modifier. So click on Add Modifier and select Subdivision Surface. The view value sets the number of subdivisions for the view that you see here, 
and the render value sets the number of subdivisions that will be used in the final render. Set both of these values to 2. Now to finish smoothing the surface, come over here and click on the Smooth button. Now we can set the material for the cup. So click on the Material button right here, and then click on the New button. This is what the Material panel looks like when using Blender Render. We're going to use Cycles Render, so come up here and click on this menu, and then select Cycles Render. Now click on the Use Nodes button. Then click here to set the surface type, and then select Glass. Next we're going to create a surface for the cup to sit on. So from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then Plane. Let's make this bigger, so click on the Scale button. Then type 5, followed by the Enter key. Now switch to Front View by clicking on the View menu, and select Front. Then grab the blue arrow and drag the plane down until it's just below the bottom of the cup. Now let's set the material for the plane. So click on the New button. I'm just going to keep the default values, which are a diffuse surface with a white color. Now is a good time to save what we have so far. So from the File menu, select Save As. Here you can specify a directory, and this is the file name. I'm going to name this cloth.blend. Blend is the extension that Blender uses. Then click the Save As Blender File button. Now let's make the cloth napkin. So from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then Plane. Then click on the Scale button, and type 3 followed by the Enter key. You can rotate the view to get a better look. I'll also zoom out. Next, rotate the plane by clicking on the Rotate button. Then restrict the rotation to the Z-axis by pressing the Z key. Then type 45 followed by the Enter key. This will rotate it by 45 degrees. Now click on the Rotate button again. This time press the X key to restrict the rotation to the X-axis. Then type 70 followed by the Enter key. Now we're going to position the napkin over the cup. So switch to Front View. I'll pan the view down some. Now drag the blue arrow up until the bottom of the napkin is just above the top of the cup. Now switch to the right side view by clicking on the view menu and select right. Then drag the green arrow until the bottom of the napkin is a little bit to the right side of the cup edge. We're going to be doing a cloth simulation where the napkin will be falling and we want the bottom of the napkin to fall inside the cup. I'll rotate the view so you can get a better view of what we have so far. Next we're going to set the material for the napkin, so click on the New button. For the surface type, select Glossy. Then enter a value of 1 for the roughness. To set the color, click here. You can drag this little round cursor to choose a color. I'm going to use a blue color. This is the color that will be used for the final render. You can also set a color for the current view by opening the settings section. Then click here and set a color. The next thing that we need to do is to subdivide the napkin so that it will be able to bend like cloth. So switch to edit mode by clicking down here. Make sure the whole napkin is selected by pressing the A key once or twice until the outline of the napkin turns orange. Then click on the Subdivide button. Down here for the number of cuts, enter a value of 50 and then press the Enter key. Now switch back to Object Mode. Now we're going to add some modifiers to the napkin, so click on the Object Modifiers button. We'll be adding three modifiers and the order that the modifiers occur is important. To add the first modifier, click on the Add Modifier button and select Cloth. We'll be setting the options for this modifier a little later. Then click the Add Modifier button again and select Solidify. This modifier will give our napkin a thickness. I'm going to keep the default thickness value of 0.01. Then click the Add Modifiers button again to add the last modifier, and this time select Subdivision Surface. 
set both the view and render values to 2. This will help smooth out the surface of the napkin. Now come over here to the left and click on the Smooth button. Now we're ready to set the options for the cloth modifier, so click on the Physics button. If you don't see this button on the right, you may need to expand the panel by dragging this edge. Here we have some cloth presets that we can choose from. I'm going to select Cotton. Then set the number of quality steps to 10. During the cloth simulation, while the napkin is falling, we want the napkin to interact with the cup and also with the surface that the cup is setting on. So come down here and make sure that there is a check mark next to Cloth Collision. Then open this section and also place a check mark next to Self Collision so that the napkin will interact with itself. Now right click on the cup to select it. Then click on the Collision button. This will allow the cup to interact with the napkin. Now do the same thing for the surface that the cup is sitting on. First right click on it to select it. Then click on the Collision button. Now we can start the cloth simulation. I'm going to pan and zoom the view for a better look. To start the simulation, come down here and click on the Play button. During the simulation, multiple images are being generated, and we should see the napkin fall into the cup and also over the side. Down here is the timeline, and this green line is the time cursor which shows the current frame number. The current frame number is also shown here. Well, I'm going to let this run just a little bit longer. This looks good here, so I'll stop the simulation by clicking on the pause button. You can step back to previous frames by clicking here, so I'm going to step through these until I find the image that I want to use. You can also step forward by clicking here. This looks good, so I'm going to use this image. The next thing that we need to do is to set up the light source. So zoom out until you see the lamp, and then right click on it to select it. Now switch to front view. Then drag the red arrow to center the lamp over the cup. Then drag the blue arrow to move it down some. Now switch to right side view. Then drag the green arrow until the lamp is in front of the cup. Now let's set some options for the lamp. So click on the Object Data button. We're going to use the Point Lamp, which is already selected. I'm going to change the size to 5, then click on the Use Nodes button. The Strength value sets the intensity of the light. You might want to experiment with this value, but I'm going to set it to 2000. Now let's set the background color. To do that, click on the World button. Then click here to set the color. I'm going to use black, and so I'll move the slider all the way down to the bottom. I'll rotate the view now so that I can see the scene better. Now I'd like this surface that the cup is sitting on to fade to black in the background. To achieve this, we just need to make the surface very big. So right click on it to select it, then click on the scale button, and type 20 followed by the enter key. Now let's set up the camera view. Start by going to the View menu and select Camera. This is the view looking through the camera and it's the view that you will see when the image is rendered. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. In order to be able to rotate and pan the view while looking through the camera, we need to make a change to the View Properties. So click on the View menu and select Properties. Then add a check next to Lock Camera to View. Then to hide this panel, Click on the View menu and select Properties again. Now we can rotate, zoom, and pan the view while looking through the camera. To position the view, I'll start by zooming in. Now I'm going to rotate the view until the back edge of the surface that the cup is sitting on is within the camera's view. Then I'll pan the view to move the image into its final position. 
Now we're ready to render the image, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save your project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. So from the File menu, select Save. Now click on the Render button that looks like a camera. For now, keep all of the default values and just press the Render button. This is a quick render that will look grainy because it isn't rendered with very many samples, but it's a good way to check our image. If you want to switch back to the previous view, click on this menu down here and select 3D View. To return to the rendered image, select UV Image Editor. Well, everything looks good with this image, so now we're ready to render the final image with more samples. So come down here and open the sampling section. This section is called Integrator in some older versions of Blender. This value sets the number of render samples that would be used. I'm going to increase the value to 2000. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now let's render the final image. So come back up here and click on the Render button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. This image is going to take a while to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. This took my computer about 21 minutes to render. To save the image, make sure that your cursor is over the image and press the F3 key. Specify a directory here and a file name here. I'm going to name this image cloth.png. Then press the Save as Image button. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.